Good for you. Right. Said as soon as I take a seat, we're on. Yeah. Okay, well, good evening. We'll get started. Um, welcome to the uh, Town Council workshop on Bessie Commons project. I think by way of introduction, why don't we go, so we can start with sure. going around the table so we all know who we are. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for allowing me to come to this workshop. My name is Cindy Taylor, and I'm the president of Housing Initiatives of New England. And my office is directly across the street at, above uh, Scarborough Grounds. And um, we own that property in Bessie Commons next door. And our primary business is senior housing, and we have complexes throughout New Hampshire and Maine. Um, and I'm most proud of Bessie Commons, probably because I went to school there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not many places you can develop, redevelop, and uh, say that you went to school there. So, um, Bessie Commons is a 54 unit complex. Um, we have a waiting list right now of 90 people. And in order for that, you know, to fill those kind of needs, it will take this complex and a few others around town probably to fill the, the needs that the town of Scarborough has. Do we just do yeah, any, any just introductions gonna, quickly yes. and then we'll just sure. the details? Sure, and then, yeah, then I'll give so, it back to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Not too far. <laughs> I'm John Kaminsky. I'm an attorney with Drummond Woodson, and I'm working with Cindy and her group on the development of the project. Bill Donnelly, Councilor. Tom Hall, Town Manager. Katie Foley, Town Councilor. Paul Johnson, Town Councilor. Don Hamill, Town Councilor. Jean Marie Katarina, Town Council. Phil Susser from Bernstein Shore for the town. Help us uh, sitting in for my colleague uh, Shauna Mueller, who's really been uh, working on this project. Great. Couldn't be here today. Thank you for being here. Do you have any introductory remarks, or should we just go right to... I think we can get right into it. I, I guess the point I want to impress upon uh, the council and, and the public is that the town is really uh, interconnected on this project. Uh, fundamentally, there's a 99-year lease. It's town-owned property, uh, subject of a lease that uh, is to benefit this project. This phase two was contemplated in the original uh, documents, uh, the TIF documents, and, and frankly everything else. Even the lease, I think, makes reference to it. There's some particular uh, changes that need to be finessed, if you will, uh, for purposes of securing the financing. And we wanted the opportunity in a workshop format to make sure you understood the history, uh, introduce the project, and talk about next steps. So primarily, um, so we are now planning this 40-unit uh, senior complex. Um, we're calling it Bessie Commons II um, until we have a better name for it. And. Um, it, it's very interesting because we thought that we had this incorporated into our original TIF that was that the town agreed to um, when we first built the uh, Bessie One. But uh, as it turns out, uh, we didn't have the financial information that's necessary for a TIF. So our council, John Kaminsky and others uh, working with your council, has indicated that we really need to go back and revamp that now that we have new financial information um, to, to obviously underwrite this for your uh, your taxes and for the, um, the TIF and the requirements of the TIF. So I don't think the TIF itself has changed any from our first one in terms of the requirements. Um, this is a housing TIF that uh, was established um, with the cooperation of Maine Housing Authority. We will be using Maine Housing Authority for our financing. Um, we will be uh, restricting our rents. We're, in a, we're a nonprofit organization, which is why we, we like this idea of leasing the land from the town and basically being a steward of your property. And I, we're trying to do a good job. I hope you feel that we are. Um, be happy to show you best you want anytime you'd like to go through it. There's, I know there are some people on the council that have not been in that building. Um, but we're very proud of it. So we have a lot of programs there. Uh, the Scarborough Land Trust has been using that property for their lectures. Um, the Friends of the Scarborough Marsh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm part of both. I mean, I really support both of those entities. But uh, the Friends of the Scarborough Marsh have been doing lectures there and inviting people from the public in. So we try to make it more than just uh, really straightforward housing. Um, that being said, uh, you can see from the rendering behind me, um, this property is going to uh, I'm just going to flip this over to keep it quite simple. Um, 
Actually, I wonder if you could just step to the podium just so we can get your voice. Okay, good. Yeah. So, um, this... I'll, I'll be your better one here. So, I hope this is being recorded properly. Um, this is the subdivision plan that we had done originally. And um, you, wanna, can you, you can show them the property lines. We have, sure, the property here. lines are, are here. And then we, um, when we did this, we created two lots because we knew that we were going to have a mortgage on the first lot for phase one, and we created this second lot. And, and we had it all part of the TIF. Um, I guess in hindsight, it probably would have been just as easy if we had just done it phase one and phase two and then come back to as we are today. But now, because we incorporated lot two into our TIF, we have to take that out of the original TIF and then come back and put together a new tip based on the, uh, the value of the property now and what it will be valued at when our development is complete. So um, that's primarily the program that we're talking about tonight. Uh, does that work? Yes, it does. It's on. Thank you. Um, this is a... So just by way of introduction again, this is the access road. Our main entrance is uh, away from Route 1 for SE1. Um, you have the southern orientation here. We are going to create a, a, basically a cul-de-sac parking on both sides of the building drop off for um, residents. Uh, very straightforward uh, design, um, but I just wanted to point that out to you. I don't know if you have any questions on that. I'm we don't need to get into too much detail. I know there's probably more important things to have to do in the TIF. I'm here tonight, though. I'm happy to answer any questions. So um, that being said, uh, I think the building form itself. There you go. Thanks. The, this, this whole design is taken from Probably what we've, we, what I know was traditional in Scarborough, which is a white clever building. The town hall used to be a white clever building. We did the, the same design format was used on Bessie Square, um, and we tried to pick up on those details in our addition on the school as well as introducing masonry brick to, to match the school that's out there. So my goal is to get as much brick on this as possible for two reasons. One is it's better for maintenance, and second of all, it, it's a, a good mix of materials to go with the school. <coughs> 41 bedroom units will be built here. Um, that's the, when we're trying to serve people in the affordable level, that's what they really want. They want to have a full kitchen, full bathroom, dining room, living room combination, but a one bedroom because that's what they can afford. So the, um, the rents will be restricted, as we said here. There'll be an average of 60% um, of the area median. Um, um, I think that there, those rents here will be around $950 a month. Includes everything. Um, and again, we have a huge waiting list for this. So that's the program. Now, if we want to go back to the TIF, um, I, I don't know where you want to start on the TIF. Um, do, you, do you want to go through the fact that our lease originally contemplated that we would not have to pay taxes on this property? Uh, and we always knew that we had to do that legally through a TIF arrangement. So I'm hoping that you all agree with us that um, it will serve the community well if we can. Perhaps it would be helpful to explain why taxes are applied in the first place. And as I understand it, it's a function of your corporate structure for purposes of gaining access to the federal tax to the tax credit program. Oh, okay. You want to start from ground zero? Well, Sorry. I, yeah. it, All right. So this is a program. Yes. This is a program that's called the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. And in order to raise funds under this program, it's, a, it's basically set up for private enterprises to invest in housing. 
So we form a limited partnership that's a for-profit entity, even though we're a controlling general partner in it. The limited partners in this are typically banks and lending institutions that our consortium come together and they loan us against the basic cost of the project. What the tax credits pay for in this case is it covers a, almost 100% of our cost for building this. In this case, I'm using a 4% tax credit, so I'm not getting quite as much as the 9%. You may have heard this from other developments in town. There's a difference. There's, there's a, it's a two-tier system. You don't get quite as much money out of the 4%, um, but it's not as competitive. <coughs> and for me, I want to get this done. I am going to work hard to get as many sources as I need to do this properly, one of which is the TIF. I need, these, I need to know that. This, this money will come back into the project to make it sustainable. But uh, overall, the low-income housing tax credit money pays for the bricks and mortar. The rents and the um, TIF will help us in the operating side to make sure that we can continue to operate this. So in order to keep the rents low and meet the needs in the community for people that aren't otherwise being served, we need this. And, um, I don't know if that's too simple or if you, need, you want to ask questions about that. But. I, I just had a, a request, an information request. I mean, the, the uh, summary that was provided um, was very helpful, but would it be possible for us to get a copy of the current lease agreement as well as a copy of the actual TIF, uh, the one that's in place, so we can look at those details? Of course. That would be helpful. Uh, I had, did have a question, Cindy, about your, uh, I mean, clearly this is a, uh, you know, huge public benefit. It's a huge priority for us. It's great to have someone who is, you know, from here and is invested in the community in so many ways. But I'm a little curious about the, the structure, the financial structure that you mentioned in terms of the limited partnership and how how that would be affected through this change. Is, is that, will that be uh, closed out and that will be somehow changed, uh, will be a new one created, or how? what will happen to that partnership? Basically, um, there will be, uh, be a new partnership set up for the second phase. Um, we have a, a group that we're partnered with on phase one. It's called Northern New England Housing Investment Fund. That's a, a local organization that's located in Portland. It was set up primarily to uh, syndicate these kind of properties for affordable housing in Maine and New Hampshire. Um, and so that will most likely be our partner. Um, but what we do is we go out and solicit uh, bids for being partners to us. And whoever will give us the best dollars, dollar value will be our partner. Um, we have, We've only worked with two people. One is a nonprofit out of New York City called NDC Corporation. They've been fabulous partners with us in probably, I don't know, 20 properties. And, but Northern New England is right here. They're local. They understand our needs. We love working with them. And that, I'm pretty sure that's who will be our partner. Um, and so it's a very great relationship. They are committed to providing affordable housing. And, um, they will go out and solicit banks. It will be TD and Key Bank and all the banks that you can think of in the state of Maine will <coughs> come together to provide these funds. They will then pay it into us in a secure way um, <coughs> based on our progress and our construction and our occupancy. So we don't get final payment until we're fully occupied. It's a very secure program, uh, as you can imagine. Low income housing tax credit program it was designed by the IRS. They are our masters in this, so we have to provide all the financial statements to every annually to Maine Housing, who is also a big partner in this. Um, and is this syndicated, or are there direct investors, the institutions that you mentioned? Is it's it syndicated, but it's syndicated through one uh, partner, limited partner that we have that will be set up by Northern New England, Northern New England Housing Investment Fund. They go out and solicit the banking partners. So our our interface, even though we 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 know who is in the syndication, our our direct dealings are always with Northern New England Housing Investment Fund, and they have a full staff. I mean, 
you know, they, they come out and they walk through the properties, they make sure that they're maintained well, that uh, we're doing what we need to do, we provide financial statements to them annually. If they want, they know that they can get them quarterly or um, every six months. They check on our insurances. I mean, this this is one of those programs that they are pretty sure is just absolutely, it has the maximum oversight that you could possibly imagine. So, from your standpoint, you know, I don't think you have to worry about us not meeting the income targets, uh, not meeting the requirements of, you know, renting to affordable people, the people that we want to, we want to serve in this community. So I think that's a good thing. Other questions or comments? Jean Marie, you want to go um, One question that just comes to mind that people in the audience may want to know is, do Scarborough people get uh, first dibs at housing here. We can or? give a preference for Scarborough. Okay. Yeah. Have you done that in the past? We have. We've done okay. it in, in yeah. We've done it in many communities. Most communities ask us about that. Uh, we can't restrict it. Right. We can definitely give a preference. Okay. And uh, it's pretty easy. Because I think that would be important for it, the taxpayers to know that it's all It's always important. Yeah. It's always important. But it's a you know this kind of housing is first come first serve and because people only you know when they right. need it they need it oh, and, yeah. uh, so they don't they can't just wait years and years and mm -hmm. years for housing so. thank you yeah as a follow-up to that I'm curious do you know what your percentages currently are I can't tell you that um, just but I can find out okay yeah. it's just a, it's a curious question more than right. anything else um, anything I'm also Cindy, I think people would be interested to know uh, how the 60% uh, uh, median income is uh, arrived at. Is that something, because that's very low. That's, that really does serve uh, the people who are in most need of assistance. Correct. For example, we have an 80% mm -hmm. AMI <coughs> uh, for afford to define affordable housing under the ordinances for the town of Scarborough. Right. So this is even right. a lower it is. Uh, threshold. figure, threshold. And you know, there's two things about that. In our TIF documents, we said that we would have an average of 60%. And in the program, if we do 180%, we have to do a percentage at 30% to make sure that we are still at a 60% average. But what that does for us is some people move in and then they have the opportunity to spend down and then they still don't, you know, then they can still afford their, um, their rent. So this is a program that the uh, income levels are established by the federal government as well as the, um, the, the rents themselves. Like we don't get to establish the rents, they are established for us annually. Mm -hmm. So, um, People have to have enough income. In this case, it's usually Social Security and then a small pension. Um, and that's where your point to the 60% comes in because you know then they have enough to pay that rent, take care of their medications, their food. You know, it's not, um, it's a nice program. It's, we have a fabulous, fabulous community over there. So I'm always hesitant to talk about restricted incomes or restrictions on those folks, but we really try to provide them with enough, you know, positive means over there so that they can live comfortably. Well, what is the average age in Bessie Commons women? I think right now we're probably at about 76. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can take people in at 55. And generally speaking, I, kind of, I like that at, at, from the standpoint that if you get a few people that are in at 55, and the you know the majority of the people are 75 to 85, it makes a better community. It's mm -hmm. just you know you don't feel like you're everybody is um, is the same. We yeah. all like that yeah. integration. I yeah. think yeah. it's like having your kids visit or your grandchildren. I have a couple things. Um, so you mentioned uh, meeting space. I have been in there a few times, but are you talking to, when you say meeting space, is it that common area when you first walk in, or is there a, a separate meeting space as well? In Bessie One? Yeah. In Bessie One, we have that beautiful place when where you, you walk in. Okay. 
and it's sunlight all day long. Yeah, yeah people and are usually doing puzzles and doing, congregating yeah, so there. We have a bridge group that you know is there on Thursday nights, and and then over and above that, downstairs in the lower level, is where we've been having the lectures because we've got a widescreen TV. They can use that for. Okay. Um, and you mentioned specifically like the land trust and Friends of Scarborough yeah. Marsh, but have other community groups. Are other community groups in, invited to reach Always. out to you to use that Always. space? Or Always I just don't know that that's well known. I didn't no, know it, that. Uh, um, and is the, will there be space like that in the new building as well? No, I don't need to create quite as much. I do have community space in here. I have laundry facilities on every level. I have sitting areas on all three levels. Um, there's plenty of space. I anticipate that we'll continue to use the school. On the third floor of the school, we have two classrooms that were, one was a science lab and the other was home economics, a sewing lab. Mm -hmm. And that is just as it is today. And we have 45 to 65 quilters that come in on Thursday mornings. Mm -hmm. So not just residents? People no, no, they're, yeah. yes. Residents are, are right. invited, but it's mostly outsiders that come yeah. in. Um, and I, uh, I'll continue to do that as long as yeah. I think that's an, an important component also, particularly when you're considering the use of TIF funds and right. with the public piece. Um, and then my only other question was, um, so my own mother's 84, I've been working hard on getting her to move or transition here, and, but I know the thing that's really important is, is being active. Yes. Is there any planned connectivity for any walking trails or anything between the two buildings or on the on the campus itself? We have lots of people that walk through the property and actually access the Eastern Trail. And, you know, going That's what I was Eastern curious village. about. Yeah. So our property abuts the Eastern mm -hmm. Village mm -hmm. and to the extent that they'll let us walk through there. There are trails, the kids use it all the time. You know, lots of people walk down through there. Um, but the majority of our residents, they will cross the street and go mm -hmm. to the park mm -hmm. you know, and come back around here and then cross over again. Yeah. So there's, and there's people you'll see them every morning doing that. Um, so nothing formal planned, but some no, connectivity. No, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, obviously we have varying degrees of people with their health, just, you know, depending on what they like to do and want to do. I, there, we have one resident over there right now who is going to be, uh, I think the site superintendent on the new building here, that has been a phenomenal point of, uh, of uh, entertainment for our, for our residents. <laughs> watching the big toys at work. Exactly. Mr. Hall's been watching that. Yeah, I, have. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have about two dozen uh, site supervisors. Right? I'll just tell you I couldn't use my office today because when they're doing the role of vibrating the com compaction, it's like being inside of a drum, and literally. <laughs> It is painful, so I have to go to the other end of the building. <laughs> but anyway, this is a miraculous uh, development here. I am, every day I say, I cannot believe how organized they are to do that job. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Anything else pop up for anybody here at the table? Mm -hmm. uh, any I, members I did, of the public that, oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I did have one other question. So. Um, I understand we're going to be financing 200000 Has that been structured yet in terms of what the, the total financing will be, and will there be some sort of prospectus or some sort of document? Well, no. Uh, last year, we were awarded $100,000 towards our, our gap financing from the Scarborough Affordable Housing mm -hmm. Funds. I am going back to ask for another 100000 this year. That application has not been completed yet, and we will be doing that very soon. Okay. But we but it is we're hopeful that we can get another hundred. And the other question I had, and maybe this is a more of a governance question, but what will so how will the uh, the value created in phase one, you know, be determined and then dis distributed? How will those is that or is that purely a private matter or is there any line of sight that the town might have? And the reason I ask that is that we're trying to um, we're Focusing on you know trying to val you know evaluate the financial performance of various tips that we've done and this is a, a matter of a lot of discussion leading up to the to the downs commitment. So is there a similar 
process that we would do to, to look at phase one and find out how we did and what's going to happen there and then also you know, phase two? I'd, I'd love to have John respond to this. It's more about the town and what you captured than it is for us, but um, two things. First of all, reference to your prior question, when the TIF comes before you folks for adoption um, at a meeting later this month, um, there will be a comprehensive financial plan as part of the development program, which will have all the sources of funds. So you'll be able to see that all laid out. On your second question, um, how do you measure the performance of one of these TIFs? Um, I always like to think about that and when we have tax expenditures and state law as well as whether or not the town has received something that lines up with its objectives at the time that it made the initial commitment to the TIF. So if you have a tax increment financing that's going to be uh, financing a facility that's going to create jobs, you want to see how many jobs were created, what level of income are they at. If you have a TIF that's designed to create senior housing, I think your questions are different. And your questions are, what was our objective? Our objective was to get a high quality, affordable senior housing project here in the town. And how has that worked out? Are people happy with it? Is it working out well? Is it full? Is it occupied? Do people want to live there? Is it attractive? Um, these things are not as susceptible to quantification as the number of jobs. But they're susceptible to quantification in terms of occupancy affordability levels, and then you've got the intangibles. Is it a healthy, safe, sanitary place for people to live? And for these kind of projects, it's fortunate because the town is partnered with others that are going to be doing the oversight. The town is relieved of the oversight burden because Main State Housing Authority is doing a lot of the oversight burden, as well as the for-profit um, Northern New England Housing Investment Fund to protect its investment. So the oversight, there's a lot of monitoring that goes on that the town doesn't have to do. But the bottom line is, I think, are your objectives being met? That's helpful. Thanks. The, the actual operation of the TIF is no, is, is no different than uh, other conventional TIFs. We, the assessor sets a value on the property, there are taxes paid, and the TIF arrangement through its credit enhancement component returns uh, the taxes back to the taxpayer in this case. Yeah, I, just, I would just add briefly that in the type of TIF this is specifically an affordable housing yeah. TIF, mm -hmm. which is a, a type of TIF that's allowed by statute. So, mm -hmm. and the purpose of that is to encourage it to uh, affordable housing. It's just a little different, obviously. It would be different than the, the goals and the, the okay. right, right. It's a very similar process in terms of how you go through the process, but it's it's specifically designed to encourage affordable, livable housing, as the statute says. So it's a little different. Main State Housing is is the entity at the state level that approves this, not the Department of Economic Community Development. So that just shows you that there's a difference. In so I, I have this straight. Then we would use whatever those criteria were for the first yeah. phase and the second phase. Right. So, but uh, whatever those were might be good for us to go back and confirm confirm what they were and then, you know, validate and verify the what they're going to be for phase two. One of the things that Sean. Uh, the attorney at Bernstein that's working on this and I have done is we've used the existing documentation for the phase one TIF as a model for what we're doing here. There have been some statutory changes we need to do to comply with what the state law has changed, but by and large we're modeling it on what was done in phase one. Okay, great. Thanks. The TIF documents through the development program document in particular uh, will provide that kind of uh, objective and, and describe the project and its purpose. Great. And, w and when will we see those? Well, that's one of the reasons uh, we, we thank you to uh, you know entertaining this matter tonight. I think there's a bit of a timeline crunch. There's a, a state process that yeah. in timeline that needs to be respected, and we're kind of up against it. So uh, at your next meeting, we'd like to introduce the documents to begin the process, and there's a statutory process that must be followed uh, that requires multiple steps and public notice and such. So you know, tomorrow we we provided that you take action tonight, right, then we would advertise, we, we have a 10-day ten, <clears throat> ten period for advertising prior to your next meeting, and if we, thank you, and if we are, are successful to be able to put that together, we'll put it together tomorrow, and we will advertise and we'll be in front of the council at your next meeting. Just to be clear, we have no action no contemplated action. on the agenda. I, I think what they're looking for is uh, a green light in terms of us being able to uh, 
issue the public notice and make sure we meet the 10-day requirement? Right. It, it, at this workshop, you, you know, if you gave us feedback and you said, no, we don't want to do this, we'd probably retreat. But if you think that there's a good support, um, we will take it to the next step and we'll be in front of you at your next meeting. Okay. So should we, uh, well, are there any members of the public that have any questions or comments? Seeing none, why don't we want to go around the table and kind of just offer some feedback um, yeah, to these I'm, folks? I, I know I, I'm, these are the only tips that I wholeheartedly support without question are the affordable housing tips. So, I mean, I don't have an issue with this. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and being um, someone, a senior residential specialist in, in real estate, I deal with people every day who don't have any place to move to. Uh, they can't afford it. Uh, and it's not a good situation for folks. So uh, to see more housing um, in such a great location, um, and I know the pro I'm very familiar with what you've got going on over, the, over across the street at Bessie now, and it's just, I think it's a fabulous uh, opportunity for the town. So that's my thinking on it. Tom? Yeah, I, I think uh, past practice is the best predictor of future performance and uh, you know, quantity, a great building. We have friends who live there. I've had the opportunity to attend meetings in your um, the amphitheater there. Uh, you know, it's a great facility and I'm you know, sure that phase two will be done in much the same fashion. The only thing I'd say is that you know, we're, we're learning as we go and as uh, you know, this is another type of TIF. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to learning more about that and exactly how that works and how it may differ compared to uh, the recent ones that we've done, but uh, uh, I think what I've heard so far is very promising, and uh, your transparency and your willingness to share details and your background, uh, your plans, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just echo what the two counselors before me said. The sooner the better is fine with me and has my full support. Yes, I'm uh, enormously supportive of this, uh, and these are 30-year tips. So that's what the proposal is. And so after 30 years, it's taxable. So it doesn't go on forever. Uh, but uh, I'm particularly pleased with the contribution that the town can make to leverage its affordable housing reserve fund to get these kinds of projects done. Uh, because this is a 40 units for 200,000, that's 50,000 a unit. Whereas units would normally cost several hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. Uh, to build on an individual basis. So this is the kind of leveraging that we always contemplated. And I would concur with my fellow counselors 150% behind this. Can you save some spots for my mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the two things I would ask you to think about and consider as you move forward into the planning pieces are meeting space, even for small groups, is at a premium. I mean, there are groups that want to find places to just, you know, sit around a table and, and we can't find it. So. If you have a room like that, you know, we, have, we can make it a little bit more um, well-known or aware. We have a library at Bessie One. Yeah. We have uh, two community spaces, large rooms downstairs. Plus I'm going to be in touch. Plus a workshop. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, plus the two classrooms on That's the great. top floor. I just never knew. It's all elevator access. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's such an attractive space. I, I know groups would love to go in. Plus it gives a little bit of exposure to right, right. the wonderful facility that it, it does. is. Exactly. exactly. And it's good activity for our residents. It makes them feel yeah. more connected um, and things part going of things on. as well. And I think, you know, our front lawn is opposite your new building yeah. in Town mm -hmm. Hall. I mean, we try to maintain that, take care of it. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it, we, I take pride in it because yeah. I live here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing I would advocate for is, is <laughs> as you would probably guess, it's some kind of trail system. You know, there might even be a partner out there who would do that for you. Um, but I don't know. That's I don't really need a partner necessarily. I just need some more cooperation. And it, you know, it might be that we work with our next door neighbor at the main veterans home. I mean, oh, yeah. and there's land down there. Right. Oh, well, that's what I mean. And we've talked yeah. a lot about wanting, you know, greater interconnectivity. Right. And so it just so would be. I mean, we can always get to um, Commerce Drive, and then people can go down to the end of Commerce Drive right. and get and on then right the Eastern, the green and ground. then come around. Right. So. Uh, there's lots of possibilities yeah. there. Great. Well, thank you for coming out tonight. And uh, it looks like you have pretty widespread support, and I imagine the other two counselors would be supportive as well. 
Well, I want to thank you for being a partner with us too because it works both ways. And I know Tom uh, has been wonderful to work with, and I, I appreciate it. I'm glad to get to know you all better. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So we have the public notice drafted. Uh, I think it needs the final proofing. Uh, we have ample time to meet the 10-day requirement. Uh, do recall that this is a two-step process. We can do them both at the same time, uh, and that those two steps are one to remove the, I'll call it lot two out of the existing TIF district, and redo those documents accordingly, and then create a separate TIF district for this this project, uh, and that will be done kind of concurrently, part of the same process. Unless someone sees a reason not to just do it at one session, uh, it seems like uh, it's just a two-step process procedurally, and I think we should do it all in one. From an approval uh, point of view, we're looking to, to uh, align the two aspects of that. Uh, it will certainly help me in my financing, because as soon as I receive this, then I will be able to move forward with my applications and complete that. In then it's just a matter of, I'm not waiting for a funding cycle. It, Maine Housing has some money that they can make available to this, and the 4% credit is a kind of a walk-in basis, and we'll, we will proceed as quickly as possible. My is biggest anybody? issue is I've got planning board approval, and um, it expires in December. I actually went for a 9% credit round a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, Scarborough does not qualify. They had targeted some other right. communities, so we did not um, we did not score as well as we might have. Or when we scored on Bessie One, we had a hundred percent. I mean, we scored on every level. Things have changed since then, so um, I'm I'm just want to get this done for the community. So I'm going to go in on the uh, on the four percent. I had a question on the timing and the steps. So. Um, you know, there is, there is a fair amount of additional information that we'd like to look at, and a couple of these things are pretty basic documents, uh, the current lease agreement, the current TIF, and the mm -hmm. proposed TIF. So uh, I am not necessarily opposed to doing it in one move. However, I am concerned about an uh, adequate time frame for us to get our heads around it, A, and B, for, you know, the public to have some line of sight to this as well in terms of those documents being posted it the public being able to to read through as well. So if we can do all that in one move, I'm fine with it. If not, I think we need to take the time. And I don't know what the time factor is, the delta is between those two things. Is it 10 days or 100 days? I don't know. But Our next meeting is the 19th. The 19th. This is teed up to come back to you uh, starting on the 19th. Uh, I have the, those source documents you're inquiring about, and I can certainly make them available to council and right. to the public as well. All right, so it gives us two weeks before it. Mm -hmm. Does that satisfy your concern? Uh, it's okay for me. Um, it's a busy week ahead in terms of an election and end of school and stuff, so I defer to what the other counselors feel on um, the timing. Any other further concerns? I have none. I don't have any. I'm fine. All right. I guess the other concern or, or acknowledgement is that the council will move to its summer schedule, so you only meet twice, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, once right. in July and once in August, right. and so right. the sooner we get this started, the sooner we can get it completed. But your points well taken. So those will, you'll have those. Yes, uh, tomorrow. I'll, I'll make them available. Yeah, the the documentation that you're requesting is readily available. Is Tom? Yeah. yeah. So I just ask that we post it. That we post it, and then uh, we, you know, we can uh, have it posted yeah. before the weekend, sir. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good. Oh, good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. right. Public disclosure. Give them two weeks. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Switch over to the soil. I'm going to warm light. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Yeah, I know what's going on.